Professor von Bowtie is a researcher at a university, and he just ran a series of studies. Now he's taking the first look at his data and trying to understand what it means. For study one, he got this p-value. What does it mean? Many intro stat students get confused and frustrated when interpreting p-values. Let's clarify the issue. To understand this, you should first understand what alpha represents. Alpha is a threshold. It's the bar that we need to cross. It's the value which p must pass to indicate significance. This means that we will always be comparing p to alpha. In every statistic that ever produces a p-value, we're always comparing p to alpha. By convention, alpha is almost always set to 0.05. But there are good and legitimate reasons to move alpha either higher or lower depending on the circumstance. This is always the researcher's choice, and they should decide ahead of time. Let's practice a few times to make sure that the comparison between p and alpha makes sense. In the intro, our p-value was 0.048. If alpha is 0.05, what do we conclude? Because p is less than alpha, we should conclude that there is significance. What if alpha was set to 0.1 and our p-value is 0.12? Now, p is greater than alpha, which means we didn't get over the bar, we didn't cross the threshold, and p is not significant. p needs to get lower than alpha in order to be considered significant. As long as p is greater than alpha, it is not significant. Let's try a few more examples to make sure this makes sense. What if alpha were 0.01 and p were 0.009? In this case, p is significant because it's less than alpha. What if p was 0.04 and alpha was 0.01? p is greater than alpha, so it's not significant. But what does it even mean to say that something is significant? When we find a statistically significant difference, it means we have evidence that we might have found something. When p is not significant, it usually means that there's no difference or no effect, nothing to see here, nothing to write home about, nothing important to report. We call this the null hypothesis, and it is supported when p is not significant. It is rejected when p is significant. Let's think about this in terms of Professor von Bowtie and his happiness. If alpha was 0.05 and p was 0.01, this is significant. We would reject the null hypothesis. That means there is a difference or an effect. This makes Professor von Bowtie very happy. When the professor finds a significant p-value, he has a greater chance of publishing his research. So he wants to find significant p-values. He wants to reject the null. He wants to find differences and find significant effects. If the professor's alpha was 0.1 and his p-value was 0.25, it would be not significant. He would have to accept the null hypothesis. The evidence would suggest that there is no difference or effect. The professor's sad. The professor will have a hard time publishing this research because journals seem to have a bias against publishing null results. If you can't report that you found a difference or an effect, they often don't care about your research. If alpha was 0.05 and the p-value was 0.001, now it is significant. Now we do reject the null hypothesis. There is evidence of a difference, and the professor's quite happy. Significant findings move science forward. This is when we are finding new things, we are finding new differences, we are finding new effects, we're publishing new research, and it's changing what we think about the way that the world works. The null results bias is still a huge problem, however. It's quite important that a researcher designed a study to look for a difference or an effect and didn't find it. We probably should be reporting null results far more than we do. Also, there are significant problems with p-values. We should understand that this is a rather simplistic way to interpret them. Nevertheless, I hope that this has provided some clarity regarding what they are and how they relate to finding differences in effects.